you go. What he said. That is the best. <laughs> This would be a mind, uh, <laughs> exactly. not just mind thing. You're going to have to guess what we're minding. So let me start with this. After Nemesis, Sir Patrick said he was done playing Picard. So how shocked were each of you to hear that he was actually on board for Star Trek Picard? Jonathan? <laughs> I'm I stood right here. I, I wasn't shocked. No. Really? No. Why not? Um, well, Honey talks, nobody walks. No, I, <laughs> I feel like Star True. Trek is too seductive to like leave forever. Right. Don't you think? Yeah. No, they wrote him something that he couldn't pass up. Exactly. And the shows, it's become such a cultural... The franchise has become such a cultural moment. Why wouldn't he want to jump back in? And I think they wrote him something amazing. So. Look at this house. size of his house. Amazing. Ooh, it's wow. at least 6,000 people. Out there. There's at least 6,000 people in this room. Uh, I right. stood here in the wings with LeVar when Alex Kurtzman came out and said, I have a surprise for you. And then Patrick, the most casual sir in the planet, came wandering out in his jeans and t-shirt. White tee, yeah. And said he was going to return. It was really exciting. Yeah. It was an unbelievable moment. It was an unbelievable And people waited 20 years for it, which was... And they, a lot of people didn't know what was happening. Right. We all scampered down from our tables because Buzz that uh, Sir Pat was in the house. Yeah, it was kind of a... It was, it was really... Well, I have a sentimental ass, so... <laughs> it was now, very moving. Now, the trailer... I'm sure you've all seen the trailer. The trailer played like a movie trailer. So it's a shame if you just saw it on something small. So we're actually going to show it now, so you can see it on the big screen. I've never seen it on the big screen. You guys are going to see it down here. Yeah. Fast. Oh, we we get to see it. On the TV monitor. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go in the audience and watch it? <laughs> I heard it's really good. Go, 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 guys. I heard it's a great show. So what was it like for you guys to sit in that crowd and watch that and hear that reaction? It, it doesn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, that's, a, that's a pretty amazing looking trailer, I have to say. That, that looks like a feature film. That was, that was pretty cool. But Jerry... Are they on this show? <laughs> We'll call casting, sir. We'll call casting. Four, two, four, six, four, three. Call a Denobulin. Call a Denobulin. <laughs> Thank you. That was our panel. <laughs> you know, you get one little Borg and all the aliens think they could get in on it. Right. It's a party. It's an alien party. I mean, come on. So go back a step. How were each of you approached to get involved with this project? Certainly, yeah. Big J. I'm going to call you Mr. Frakes and you Jonathan. Oh, no. Really? Oh, Ian, no. after 35 years, you're going to call me Johnny. Mr. Frakes? I'm going to, all right, I'm going to call you Jonathan and you Johnny. Yeah, okay, exactly. All right. We didn't work that out beforehand, actually. Sorry. I was asked to come and direct a couple of episodes of Picard. Which I, I got to say. Oh, my God. Right? I directed the one where we introduced Seven of Nine. Woo! That's your clip, yeah. That's Richard. Sure. They were going to beam the booze in, remember? I said, why don't we have Patrick? Because I'm pour a drink. That's right. And I was thrilled, as you can only imagine, to be back with Patrick and to be back in the family of Star Trek. I get to do Discovery, which is kind of my new home show. And I, it was, I, I won't pretend that I wasn't really excited. And then to work, and I got to work with Jerry, which I hadn't done much of since we'd done Leverage together. And, and the, the cast is spectacular, needless to say. And Patrick, for some reason, is crushing it now. Is he not? He, his, his confidence, his ability to, uh, his vulnerability, his sense of humor, his, uh, his emotionality, his up surface. He's, he's, he's as great as he's ever been. And because he loves the project, and because the writing is spectacular, and the, uh, the showrunner is a, a man named Michael Shabon, who deserves spoof and hollows. And I'll tell you a little, 
little anecdote from a conversation I had with Alex Kurtzman, who's the keeper of all things Star Trek now. We were talking about, I'm doing an episode of Discovery, and there's some questions, and we talked about the Picard episodes that I had done, and then we talked about Shabon, who has become the showrunner, and what's going on with him, and how he's learning this job, and he said, Michael, he said, no, he said, after all, Michael is Mozart. Yeah. That's a pretty serious compliment. So Shabon is Mozart. I didn't know he was Mozart, but apparently he's, he is. Do now. That sort of laid there like a box, that line. But, Jerry, how did it feel when you were invited in? <laughs> we were listening to Mozart, yeah. actually. No, I, well, we're we were at the Hollywood Bowl, actually. Yeah. And Johnny was with me. Yeah. And, um, one of, I'm hearing myself, I really, that's weird. Um, one of the creators of the show, James Duff, who's another dear friend of ours, after about four glasses of champagne, he was like, well, this, this might be the time to bring this up. So, here's what I'm thinking. And he pitched an idea, which the story is not the same story that he was originally thinking, but the character, the way he had conceived of this character is, is basically what he described to me, and it sounded really cool. Um, and I thought, yeah, that, you know, it sounds fun, but whatever, this is, you know, a year and a half ago, maybe, something, well over a year. And, um, so I didn't think anything of it, but then every time I saw him again, he would mention it again. And then cut to about a year ago at the Creative Arts Emmys, was it last year, for the 50th anniversary, uh, and Alex Kurtzman was there, and I met him, and he mentioned it as well. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this might actually, this might actually happen. And it did, and, um, it's pretty cool. Johnny, I, I, Johnny, I, I was at the Hollywood Bowl too. <laughs> what are you doing? And after the four drinks, or was it eight? Uh, well, after we talked about Jerry, he he did say, and you know, would you want to come back as well? And I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, he would. Yes, he would. Um, do I have to wear the makeup and the costume? He said, I don't think you will. I said, then I really want to come back. Oh, he, that was part of his pitch when he was telling me you to. Will not there's, no to it. there's no cap to There's no cap. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, in Hollywood you hear these things all the time, and then projects don't ever go anywhere. Oh. And so, we were very cautious, right? We're like excited, but like, let's wait and see. And, yeah. well, you know, if it happens, it happens. And then we got the calls. And then you're in, you know, wardrobe fittings, and then you're getting a tour of the sets, and you're going, Oh, I think it's happening. I better go study my lines <laughs> and figure out who Hughes become because it's been a long time and I have no idea who he is now. Did 07. So, yeah, it was a it was a trippy year actually. And then you have and then you can't tell anybody for a year. Do you know how hard that is? Yeah, we knew about this. I'm the long worst secret keeper ever, time. but I, I rock that. It's more than a year that you've known about. Yes, I've yeah. Been for a year. Well, I had to do it. Wasn't it? Didn't you do the interview? I had. Yes. He did a whole like Borg issue. You both I'm, lied to me. I lied. And I said I can't say bold anything. Bold face. Yeah. Bold face. I bold in, face in lied. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said I'd come back though. That wasn't a lie. That's they true. asked. That's <laughs> But they had asked. They had asked. I think I learned it. What did I say? Never say never. I think that's right. what I kept answering. There you go. <laughs> Jonathan, it had been a good 15 I begged to come back. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it had been a good 15 years since you played Riker. How concerned... 18. 18. All right. Well, good 15 equals 18. How concerned were you about it going in, and how quickly did you slip back into the character? I'm yet to find out. You shoot this week? Okay? I shoot this week with... Uh, uh, all right, so the first part of the question, how concerned are you? More than you know. In what ways? And I have been, every morning when I wake up, I've had the script for quite a while. Every morning, the first thing I do is go over my lines. Because I'm, first of all, I've seen what Patrick's, the shape he's in. Marina's been starring on the West End in a play, so her acting muscle, and I see what this acting company is like, because I just directed two of the episodes. And I was really happy as a director. I was a fine, I was a nice little actor on Star Trek. But first of all, I'm the third best actor in my own house. And on the show, you know, put me wherever you want. Wait, wait, wait. But it certainly wasn't Jeannie, the top. Then... Jeannie and then my daughter Eliza. Okay. So, I was really happy that I learned another craft. And it's been very good to me. Yeah. So, I will share this. Watch the PR people. They're everywhere. They could be sitting right in front of you. No, they're here. Just between me and you. 
I did play one scene with Picard already. And I won't tell you anything about it, except this. At the end of the scene, we were in three different locations. At the end of the scene, Doug Aronkanowski, the director, said, I've got to go on to the next set, and I'm going to leave you guys here with a drone. A drone is a, you know what a drone is, right? So the drone came, he said, it'll just be you guys. Or drone, or different drone. A different drone drone. A drone drone, a camera drone. <laughs> so the drone comes and shoots the two of us playing the scene. And off in the woods is somebody with Patrick's chair and a second AD named Alex. And uh, Patrick says, well, I think, we, I think we've done it, Johnny. I said, yeah, I do too. So we walk. And with the, it's just the two of us. The company is in, the entire 150 people has moved on to the next set, which is another part. And he said, is there anything better than spending the day with filmmakers that know what they're doing and to be, to be able to work with the people you love? Aww. 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 And they're through. And then Jonathan, from the familiar to the new. What impressed you about this young new cast, since you directed them? They're not that young. <laughs> <laughs> They're younger than me. We're not that old. Not either, that so new either. Either. Right. They're not that young or that new. It's a very, it's yeah. a fact. It's experience. I had done a show with Michelle Hurd, who's spectacular. Allison Pill, I had no idea. Yeah. Had the, what? She's like a, uh, a violinist. She's, she can do anything. We have a new guy named uh, Evan, who's from Australia, who's Stick, wonderful. And this uh, hot Santiago Cabrera is just crushing it. He's playing. Oh, I shouldn't tell you anything about what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's, the kind of, that's exactly the kind of thing I get in trouble for. It's a great cast. Very cool. Jerry, you had never worked with Patrick before. How was the experience for you so far? It's amazing. I'd only actually ever met Patrick once over all of these years at some event after party, like 18 years ago, something like that. Um, he's lovely. I mean, and I, I know most of the Next Gen cast better than I know my own cast. I mean, I know these guys so well, and I've seen them at so many shows over the years, and we hang out. And um, So it, it's funny that I know so much about him, and I know him from the periphery. Um, but he's lovely. He's just lovely. And of course, he's an you know, incredible actor. I said to Patrick, how do you like work with Jerry? She's marvelous, Johnny. <laughs> she's, so, she's so present. But you're very present. Thank you. Yes. Okay. You know, I, I work with Patrick. Why is Brent not here? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, he does the Patrick Stewart impersonation. Send it away, team. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> say about Patrick, uh, when I worked with him I was very young and obviously I just became a big fan of his work. I mean, I, to get to work with him in your 20s, you're like, whoa! And then you'll see all his plays and so coming back to the role as an, an adult <laughs> and getting to spend, a, I got, I got, honestly the entire job has circled around for me, uh, no offense to anyone else, the amount of weeks I've had to have one-on-one -on -one scenes with Patrick and had time to spend hanging out with him and talking and getting to know him and our shared love of rescue pit bulls and food and wine. And yeah, I just, uh, I adore him. And so uh, for me, the job has been, the, the gift has been to get to work with Patrick for me. So. And then Jerry, you're, you've been working for years since you played Seven. How interesting, challenging was it to go back and revisit her after all, all those years period, and then all those years of more experience that you're now bringing to the role as an actor? Honestly, it was freaking terrifying. And these two can attest to that. True, true. <laughs> because they both saved jump. my ass. Where's like, the voice? Where's her voice? There you go, she was telling me about that. I was freaking out. I knew, okay, she was a very specific character for four years on Voyager. And there was a lot of growth, and there was a lot of, you know, all of that, because she went from being a machine to learning to be human. But, particularly in the way she moved and her voice, that was what, was what I was really hanging up on, because her voice didn't change that much in four years. So she still had a very stilted, very formal, very stylized way of speaking at the end of Voyager. 
And when I got the initial script, and I knew from the initial pitch when Jameson told me, you know, a year and a half ago that she's not the same seven, she's much more, you know, human and much whatever, she's been on Earth for a long time and she's been through a lot. But when I saw that initial script, and, you know, you saw her, what the hell are you doing out here? You know, she's, it's a very, 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 very different voice. And that was what was freaking me out. So I had my friend, like Johnny said, because he started working before I did. And he was like, okay, but once you get the costume, that, that'll help you because it helps you. It does, and it helps you, it informs the way the character moves and the way the character stands and, and that kind of thing. But I was having a really hard time with her voice. I just couldn't hear her in these lines. I couldn't find it, and it was really freaking me out to the point where my husband was like, I've never seen you get like freaked out about a script, ever. <laughs> um, and so, thank God, this one was directing my first two episodes, and Johnny worked before I did, so he had just gone through all this himself, and I was literally freaking out. <laughs> I was like bursting into tears. I don't know what her voice is! I, I can't it. find her! Cut it out! <laughs> <laughs> so Johnny came over, and we ate lunch, and he sat down with me, and we read the script for like an hour, and finally he just, because I just, I was, I think I was just so freaked out that I couldn't even think clearly about it, because finally after like an hour he goes, okay, how about this? Just try this. What if, because, okay, I can't get things what? <laughs> because this is the way it's, it's only a few now. people, just go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the smartphones on Twitter as we speak, waiting for the um, spoiler. Um, okay, I, let, me, let me figure out how to say this without getting in trouble. Um, the tone of the show is a little bit more modern and, and, and more like a movie now. It is. Yeah. But also, uh, okay, the Borg have always been hated. They're universally hated because they were, you know, right. bad guys. They were tough. But... There's, you know, other elements in this world with the Borg, and what if she had to make the choice to be as human as possible, to survive, to sound as human, to act as human as she possibly can? Because she clearly is always going to look like a former Borg, because she's still got these implants that can't go away. Um, so what if she had to make that choice, a conscious choice, to sound and be as human as possible? And that, she was that's like, all I needed. Oh, that's I give it that. I, I was like, that's what I need! <laughs> I just needed something for it to make sense as an actor, why she would have that huge a change. And then it made sense to me. And then I was able to do it and get on set. I still was freaking out my first scene, but... What happened? No. <laughs> you have to watch the scene. For a little while, but... She found her voice. Yes, she there you go. Found her voice. That's what I was saying. Jerry, I knew I was in good hands, too, because I knew that Johnny would... Jerry, I, I said, said call Jonathan, life. too, right? I'm like, first of all, call Jonathan. <laughs> Now, I know you had a Borg alcove at your house for a good number of years, and Johnny just told me that you guys had drinks in the Borg alcove. <laughs> I, I, More I, than I once. can't not share that with our 6,000 friends. Yeah. So please, tell us a little about partying in your Borg alcove. Well, yeah, I, I did. I yeah. mean, after we've four years of that character, I figured that that was the least they could give me as my alcove from the shop. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it, was, it was in my... It was at one of your dinner parties. Game room, yeah. Yeah. the old house, and we yeah. may have... Yeah, there was nothing things. untoward, it was just trans people. It was just, yeah, we just happened to like, yeah, the Borg alcove and toast. Yeah, and like but it was cute. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Johnny, you displayed so much personality, such humanity on TNG. What was it like for you to revisit the character? Uh, like Jerry, I panicked. Um, <laughs> well, Hugh was based on uh, something very personal for me in my 20s. I was going through a very traumatic time and I lost a loved one and he was based on that person. So. When I played Hugh, I was playing someone else, in a way, as an actor. Over the years, I've learned to use myself more and more, because that's always better if you can. And because people that knew us were writing these roles, there was a lot written into Hugh now that reflected my own personal experiences as a gay Latino male uh, in our world today and through the years of the AIDS epidemic, etc. So, uh, there was a lot in the Borg experience from the end of TNG to now that was emotionally easy for me to connect to. However, um, there was a lot about Hugh's physicality that came from the wardrobe, which I loathed at the time, because it was impossible to wear. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure how much of myself I could use, how much of the... I, I didn't want to lose the complete physicality of the old Hugh. And in a way, Jerry and I talked a lot about, like, when you're doing Star Trek, you're doing it for you guys, right? Because a general audience can watch a good performance and be like, well, that makes sense to me, but 
you all. <laughs> we did not want to mess it up for you. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> no, we, we talk. We're like, they're going to kill us if we do that. <laughs> you know, we have to be like true to our base, you know, our audience. They know our roles in some ways better than we know them ourselves. So I, I was in a panic. Uh, I got a tour of the set. The tour of the set gave me some great research ideas. And I researched a, hist a human historical event that it reminded me of. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, and I... You're dancing right on the edge. No, no, no. You are I dancing talked about right on the edge. I did research on this historical event to feed myself, and then I still didn't have him. And then when I was on set, he came to me. And uh, it was kind of a magical moment because I shot the first scene and... I thought, oh, welcome home, Hugh. There you are. And uh, it was kind of a, a great experience, that first beat of it. And it's been a great experience all summer, to be honest. Well, building on that, you had worked with Patrick before on TNG, with Jerry on, on Voyager. She also happens to be your one of your closest friends. Yes. And you are yes. married to her manager. I am. So on a personal level, how full circle has all of this been? It's all your world <laughs> We travel all, all over the world together. It's like insane. It's insane. I, mean, I think it's, it's fabulous. Amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's, the best. it's a dream come true. Yeah. It really is. You can't ask for it. You never can ask for anything more than this. I mean, you guys, I want you to know, you guys have sustained my life for so long. You have. And my gratitude to you, I mean it. I mean, I did not work for 30 years. Our lives, for all of us, our, our experiences around, our family relationships we have as a cast, really didn't come from the show. For you guys, maybe, but for me, it came in the conventions. So to be given kind of like an extra, like, you know, five years of doing this or ten because of this, it's a great gift, so I'm <laughs> very grateful, very grateful. And then going back to the show, guys, I mean, given that every single thing is on the internet these days, how amazed are you that no one has managed to snap photos of you guys? I I'm, cannot believe I'm, that they kept the secret until Comic-Con. I truly did not ever really think was, they'd be able to pull that off. I agree, and I think, frankly, they expected somebody from Next Gen, but when your face showed up, from what I gather, since I missed Comic-Con, like a was was the highlight of the? It was. It was correct. It, it was a. a it was a real surprise. Right. Would you say that's true? Oh, yeah. yeah. Everybody expected TNG, but it the was, wild card was yeah, Jerry. It was a beautiful. Surprise. How cool are you? <laughs> but Jerry, so you were so really cool. I did go. Visit, I did go visit Jerry on set, and <laughs> Jerry had to walk around in a giant hooded cave. <laughs> It was great. It was great. To go to the they bathroom the or set. to go eat. My invisibility cloak. And they hit her from locations. It was like Harry Potter. We're not kidding. Full I literally cloak on. Yeah, it was. I looked like, yeah, I looked like the the costume, right. I covered her head. My hand was yeah. covered under the thing. The they did that on the JJ movies also. They, they, but you know, it paid Paris, off. They covered their golf cart. I think we were on location at CityWalk. At Universal Studios. Excuse well, me. I'm like, you're trying to keep it secret and you're trying to theme park. <laughs> Spoiler. We shot there. Wait, that was months ago. So you know, on Discovery, we actually go into the beer universe. Is that a spoiler? <laughs> anyway, so we're I was like, this is the poorest idea you could possibly have when you're doing something a secret. But oh, so I had God. to go the second I would step out of my trailer, just to go to the makeup trailer, to go to the van, to drive to the set. So I'm driving in the van it's like a great this. Story though, doesn't it make for a great we're story. We're driving on the back lot behind the tram tour. Behind the tram tour, tram, like right there. Like, this is so gonna get out, and it didn't. And I we weren't out. allowed to leave our trailer even on on stage. We, uh, once I'm in makeup, I'm not allowed to leave my trailer to go eat, like to the look, to the actual crew and cast meal. tent or whatever. Because they haven't revealed, you know, the Borg's makeup, right? So they're just so secretive about it. And I think it's kind of great. Cause aren't surprises awesome? <laughs> I'm so excited to see all that for the first time. I mean, they pulled it off. I can't believe it. And they pulled it off. And then, Jonathan, you directed two episodes of Picard. How different a style will this show have from either TNG or Discovery? And how do you, as the director, make those appropriate shifts to accommodate those differences? Good question, Liam. Thank you, John. <laughs> Picard has been advertised as 10 movies by Patrick and Alex and all the people involved. 
And the two that I did were completely different stylistically and were written differently and shot differently and therefore we, they will have, each will have their own identity. A discovery is much more of the J.J. cinematic filmmaking shoot to thrill sort of uh, approach, which is a blast, I gotta say. Picard is a more thoughtful show and uh, very elegant and um, we still got some lens flares. <laughs> but but it, it, it is uh, uh, stylistically, it is driven. Each each episode is driven by by the story, and therefore the shooting style is driven by the story. But I did want to say something without having any NDA issues about Picard, as opposed to Next Generation and Discovery, which I was able to experience all three in, to different levels. When Next Generation was uh, coming out, if you will, it was... It was gay! It was a good turn out of The second Jonathan said that, he knew yeah. that was coming. There was a, a very skeptical audience, you guys, mm. correct? Yes. And that's sort of an understatement. Right. Hostile. You were the stepchild. <laughs> Nobody wanted to, to replace their uh, Kirk, Spock, and Bones, and I get that. And then it took three years for them to accept a French bald English captain. <laughs> and his, yeah, it was it was about the, the third season, and Discovery, which is an incredible cast and a beautiful show. As, um, at the same, they had two things. They had the uh, end of all four of our shows, and then they had all of JJ's movies, and so the audience is now being asked to accept a brand new company. And again, they had to be, and they did by the middle of the first season. Discovery had won them over. Picard, from what I'm feeling at all these conventions, all of you are, you know, most of you all are inclined to be looking forward to it, to be anticipating it positively, and, and the energy around wanting to like this show is very high. Yeah. Yeah. There's your answer. Yeah. And Jonathan, can I ask you one question today? This is the one, all right? Number one is now being played by a dog. A beautiful, noble, good boy, but a freaking dog. How much offense do you take to that? And be honest, no NDA here, go for it. Tell us what you really think. On the show I had always pitched was the Rikers in Space. A little half hour, single camera comedy. With, you know, I was Mr. Troy. And, it was, and uh, we had our wacky Uncle Data and our little dog, Worf. <laughs> but they stole the idea, and now I'm number one. I thought, and after further review, it turns out, you know who the dog is on the show? Q. Fact or fiction? <laughs> Good idea. There you go. Now, Jonathan, uh, Johnny, I'm going to leave you there. Uh, you, in addition to being an actor, are a gay rights activist. What has it meant to you personally to see Trek's evolution when it comes to inclusion? We've got an African American female lead on Discovery, as well as a same sex couple. It's got to mean the world to you. It didn't exist when you did Star Trek years yeah, ago. Yeah, I mean, we always can glean from Star Trek that we existed as a gay people, <laughs> because there, there, were, there was a wonderful episode of Next Gen, because I did binge the entire series. But they didn't have the guts no, I know, to cast the man in that part. But you had Talk a wonderful... Outcast? Yes, yes, wonderful episode. So there were... It's not what we, where we are now. The idea that, that we can see Wilson and, and Anthony in a uh, marriage relationship uh, without it being like commented on, right? That it's just there. Um, is the best of Star Trek to me. And so the diversity, the inclusion, I mean, I used a lot of my own very personal things to do with being a gay human being on Earth to play Hugh. And I'll tell you what's really kind of mind-blowing. When it was announced that I was coming back, I have gotten tweets and letters from people that came out because of Hugh. And I was like, Hugh wasn't gay. Like, how did they figure that? <laughs> God, I'm so gay, it came through rubber? <laughs> I mean, I was like, what? 
and the, and the kids like, and I watched iBorg, and if little Hugh could stand up to the collective, and I could stand up to my parents, and I came out, well, I was like blown away by that. And uh, I think it's because we use who we are, you know, and what a great thing that Star Trek and television and film now are allowing that story to be told, you know? Right? We can use our full selves and, and storytelling and talk about being, you know, transgender or gay or any of the things that are part of our, our fabric. So, I love it. Very cool. Italian. And I've got an interesting... You're not going to ask me if he's gay now? No, all right. Just you gay? I don't know. There you go. Right, right. All right. So I have a very important question for Jerry and Jonathan Del Arco. When was the last time you guys were on a cruise with Jonathan Frakes and Brent Spiner? Never. Never. But. But. Oh. But. Ready, cruise? but. Get your speedos ready, Jonathan. That's right. Star Trek the Cruise 4. Oh. We'll be there. They'll be there. Are you going to go on the cruise? I hope so. What's your favorite part of the cruise? My favorite part of the cruise? Be frank. Be frank? Uh, well, probably when you climbed the chair. No, that was, that was pretty awesome. No. What? It happened. You did the chair climbing at a chair climbing, 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 climbing competition. That was a one off. That won't happen again. <laughs> uh, best part of the cruise was Johnny Phillips. Oh, he was a riot. Yes, John. Ethan Phillips, Ethan Phillips does, does the show. bluest, dirtiest show. He does a blue show after midnight that is so incredibly inappropriate. Wait, that's an, that's an option? Because I was asked to do something. I can do a blue show. Better talk to Johnny. The guys are here. You can absolutely do it. Okay. Hey, guys, you're going to take They're us gonna off. They're going to play us off. Let's get in at least a couple of fan questions, okay? Yeah. Give us five more minutes. Are we, are we good? Can I have more time? No! Powers the view behind the curtains? Yes? How much more can I have? Five minutes. I've got five minutes. Fast. Fans time. Come guys, on, we all know you love them. Please just ask questions. Let's go. A quick thing. Uh, to Dr. Freaks, I know you were captain back in, uh, in the last movie, fighting the captain in Gold Ship, but you were originally another captain way back a long time ago, a different, different genre. In fact, I got a gift for you. Like, I like to give to you on, on stage. Wait, no, 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 no. Oh, I know what this is. I know what this is. I'm gonna go over there. It's fine. Okay. Because you know, Ian, I was Captain America. Oh, right. I am just protecting you. What? Wait, what? What? He was actually War Captain America. Well, well. Thank you. Thanks for bringing us up. <laughs> Tell the story, Jonathan, real fast. I was cast. Oh, is that for me? Yes. Thank you. I'm full up on your name. Up. I'll bring it to the photo op. Right. No, 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 you bring it to the photo op. All right. There we go. When I first got to New York City, my buddy Charlie Davis was playing Spider-Man. He said, they're looking for a guy to do Captain America. So I went over to 575 Marvel. I met Stan Lee, the late, great, great. Stan Lee. <laughs> they put me in a spandex suit, my first spandex suit. They sent me downtown to get red boots. They got me a... Uh, Garbage can lid with a star on it. And they sent me out to open up comic book stores in Omaha. Damn. Why is there not a mirror of that on your table in the dealer's room? The high How many of those you sell? sell? Comic books. I did, and I wrote in. <laughs> I used to get into the rental car with a guy who picked up the airport. I get in the front of the rental car, take the garbage can lid out, grip around the uh, Captain America things at the top, and ride into the 7 Eleven like that. <laughs> and they said, You don't even look like Captain America. But I did get to go. I love That's why you direct now. now, right? All right, let's go to the right, real fast. I love everything about that. <laughs> Hello. I didn't know that, did you? Hi. Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> um, thank you so very much for bringing Star Trek back to the current timeline. I've been so very hungry to see what has been new in Star Trek for years and years. So thank you for giving us Picard. Um, so. My first question, I have two questions. Just one, please, so we can get other people in, too. So pick okay. your best question. Well, I guess I'm going to have to do this one, if you can hold this. Uh-oh. Um, is it possible that there is going to be a Denobulan on, uh, on the new series? <laughs> What did you give him? One dollar. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Well, <laughs> 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 I love it. Let's 
Let's go to the left. Nice tie. In this 10 episode series, how large is Riker's role? How large is Seven of Nine's role? And how large is Hugh's role? Jonathan, show me your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> They're all momentarily wearing Sorry, a shirt. Can't, can't, say. can't touch that one. I would right. say, I would say this. Size is irrelevant. <laughs> Absolutely. To our right. This question for Jonathan. If you could give us a more taste, being as you are a director on the card, what is the writer's room like on the card? How do you go out developing the stories on the card? Thank you. It's good to have you. Get back. Thank you. Thank you. As the director, I'm actually not in the writer's room, but I do know that the writers, one is Mozart, I believe, <laughs> Kirsten Beyer is Beethoven, Akiva Goldsman is Schubert, Alex Kurtzman is uh, Lennon and McCarthy. <laughs> I'm not in that room, I wish I were. I would have a much more succinct and informative answer. <laughs> no worries, let's go to the left. This is a question for Jonathan Freaks. Uh, I would like to know if you're aware of a recent popular internet video in which you ask a large number of questions. <laughs> Maybe. And Maybe I have. have. Just quickly, if you have any commentary, and also, uh, can you recall the tallest man you've ever seen? <laughs> <laughs> it's a meme. I'll talk to you about it later. It's sort of like, it's like Captain America. There's some things you don't know about. I'm learning so much. So very much. <laughs> all right, everybody, we've got to we stop go. there. God bless you all. Thank you for coming. Wilson Cruz, Mary Chico, and Mike Westmore are going to judge. Give it up for Jonathan Craig, Jerry Ryan, and Jonathan.